I prefer cleaning the table with isopropanol, however, any cleaner will work just fine. If you use soap and water, remember to wash the table with ample amounts of water in order to remove all the soap from the surface. Once the table is clean, I will mark the table with two hashes that are spaced approximately 5 millimeters apart. I do this because it helps me keep the flow cells uniform when I'm preparing them. I will typically make anywhere between 10 to 25 flow cells in one sitting for future use. The slides that I use are from VWR and they are stated as being pre-cleaned. We do not clean the slides or the slips any further once we open the package. There are many different types of cleaning procedures and you should follow the protocols that are best suited for your experiments. After centering the slide between the hash marks, I next use permanent double stick tape made by Scotch to adhere the slip to the slide. I now tear off a piece of the tape and hold it in my hand such that it is convex with respect to the slide. I do this because I have found that it makes handling the tape much easier and it is a great way to feel if you have touched the tape to the slide or not. If the tape touches the slide in any way, never ever remove it from the slide. What will happen is some of the tape glue will adhere to the slide and may cause problems with data taking. This can be seen in the following image where I have purposefully removed a piece of tape from the slide. You can see that there is a line of tape glue where the edge of the tape once was. Once you are ready to put the tape on the slide, do so in one motion so that you are not tempted to take away your hand if the tape placement gets messed up. I will position the tape such that its edge lines up with the marks on the table. Sometimes I don't always get the tape to line up with the edges of the slide and the marks on the table. This doesn't matter too much, as in this case here, where I have exaggerated the skew of the tape on the slide. If this does happen, I will position the slide such that the two edges of the tape are true to each other. I next trim the tape with a set of box cutters that have been glued together by some spacers. The tape will have a tendency to curl up when making the cut. If this happens, just smash the box cutter combo on the tape and resume cutting. I next place a cover slip over the channel formed by the tape. I next use an empty box cutter to adhere the slip to the tape. You will know when the slip is properly adhered to the tape as the transparency of the slip, tape, and slide combo will change to become uniform. This is difficult to show in the film due to the angle at which you must observe the tape at, but you will see a slight difference in how the light reflects off of the glass and tape surfaces. The way I transfer fluids from the flow cell is by wicking away the previous fluid. Here I am adding blue food coloring to the flow cell. I now introduce some yellow food coloring to the flow cell by placing a tissue at the opposite end of the pipetter. The tissue acts as a wick to remove the fluid in the flow cell as I introduce a new fluid. I initially added 10 microliters of blue food coloring and then added the same 10 microliters of yellow food coloring. As you can see, not all the blue food coloring has been replaced by the yellow food coloring. This is why you should always exchange at least twice as much fluid as you did when you introduced the first liquid to the flow cell. Once I am done exchanging the fluid in the flow cell, I seal it with nail polish.